There has been so much death and sadness in our town. Diocletian has killed thousands and thousands of Christians and does not care for any of them. I wish God can just show himself and tell me what to do. Julius. Who's there? I cannot see you. Show yourself. I am the Lord God, and I have come to send you on a mission that is very important. Of course, my lord. Anything. I want you to be the caregiver of the martyrs. I want you to look after them and be responsible for their burials. Lord, that is a big task. Are you sure you want me to be responsible for this? Yes, you are my child and I have trust in you. You will encounter trials and persecution, but do not fear. I will not forsake you. You will be blessed beyond compare and will have a special place in heaven prepared for you. But where do I need to go? Who do I talk to? God does not answer St. Julius and departs from him. St. Julius was not sure how to fulfill the commandment that God gave him, but was confident in his knowledge that God gave him. Do you think that St. Julius will fulfill God's mission for him? I have a great idea. I must appoint 300 biographers to talk about the lives of the martyrs. This will help everybody know the amazing faith that the martyrs have, and how much they love God so much. Did you guys know that some people have died because they believe in God? This is because they believe that God taught them and will not accept any other belief that is not right. St. Julius' main job was to take care of the bodies of the martyrs who died for Jesus and bury them after they died. It doesn't sound like a job anyone here would want, right? But St. Julius was so obedient to God that he humbled himself and took on the responsibility of burying the martyrs with a proper burial, did not complain one bit. That was his job every day. That is so amazing. St. Julius gathered the 300 biographers who were responsible for talking about the lives of the martyrs in the church. As they were talking, suddenly there was a loud banging on the door. Open up, Julius. We are commanded by Emperor Diocletian to arrest you and bring you back to him. Open up or we will break in. The biographers stood trembling in the house, but St. Julius told them not to be afraid because the Lord was with them. He opens the door. What am I being arrested for, soldier? Quiet, you have no place to talk right now. Come, you will be punished for all that you are doing. The Roman soldiers grab St. Julius and start beating him before he comes before the emperor. He arrives beaten and spit on. The emperor enters his chamber. Give me my daily drink. I want to celebrate the death of all these Christians. I finally get to assert my power on them and they won't have to believe in this Jesus Christ. A man who died and did not even resurrect from the dead. Such a joke. Now I have to deal with his Julius, another common man who wants to talk about the lives of the martyrs. Bring him to me now. Do you think Emperor Diocletian is doing the right thing? Is he right about Jesus? St. Julius enters with bruises all over his body and blood dripping from all sides. He is tired and hurt really bad. Well, look what we have here. This is the person who wants to write about the martyrs? Ha! Can you not get it inside your head? Jesus is a fake. He never was God and will never be God. I just killed a hundred Christians in the past couple of weeks and you are still not afraid of me? I will give you one last chance to follow me and my idols. If not, I will continue to torture you even more until you die. Your choice. I only follow the one who sent me here and that is my Lord Jesus Christ. I only came here because of him. I will never follow your idols. Torture me all you want. I love my God and will never leave him even if I die. The governor continued to torture him and brought him back again. Now did you learn your lesson? My mind has not been changed. I will never do as you say. Repent from your ways and foolish worshipping. That's it! The governor raises his hands in anger when suddenly something amazing happens. Now remember you guys, what is about to happen is not a fairy tale story or a fake story. This really happened and based on a true story. So as soon as St. Julius started praying, the earth literally opened up and swallowed the idols that were being worshipped, as well as the priests who were worshipping the idols. St. Julius was able to convert Governor Arcanius and is known for his beautiful humbleness to serve the Lord in something as low class as bearing the dead. But St. Julius humbled himself before God and did exactly as God told him. His love and care for the dead shows a great man of compassion and love for Christ. Also, he was willing to go through so many tortures and beatings just because he loved God so much. He was later sent to another governor who martyred him, and he received the crown of martyrdom and joined Jesus in heaven. Let us all clap for St. Julius.